In this module, we'll cover the City and County of Denver's commercial and multifamily code changes. We'll introduce the Energize Denver Ordinance, the existing building electrification requirements, and some permit process changes as we go along. Let's take a minute to talk about the Energize Denver Ordinance. In 2021, the Energize Denver Task Force which was a task force made up of a variety of stakeholders from across several sectors, including the real estate sector, the energy sector, labor, workforce development, affordable housing, small business, resident advocates, the solar industry, energy efficiency, and environmental advocates, recommended a partial electrification upon system replacement approach that uses partial electrification or dual fuel or hybrid strategies at the end of life replacement through heat pumps for primary heating and water heating. As a component of this, there's a net zero new building requirement, which starts in January of 2024, which really guides new construction to be all electric with no furnaces or tank type water heaters allowed in new construction. The electrification permit and code changes that these modules are focused on target the existing building electrification requirements. Here, a key strategy is to ensure that at least half of all incentives go to equity priority buildings. The city determines equity priority buildings based on a variety of measures. You may qualify for additional assistance in complying with Energize Denver, the city's building performance standards for existing buildings, if your building has A, human service providers defined as a nonprofit tax exempt entity that offers critical services, or has affordable housing units, either deed restricted or those considered naturally occurring or otherwise serving frontline communities. Let's talk a little bit more about the Energize Denver electrification requirements and particularly what I'd mentioned before on partial electrification. So in this case, again, partial electrification means that natural gas can remain in place for peak heating and is recommended for most existing building electrification retrofits. The goal here is to enable you, the contractors and the building owners to electrify to the extent that is feasible or reasonable with the current electrical capacity already in place for the building for cooling. The outcome here that is hoped for is that this approach reduces the natural gas use at the main equipment up to 80% while minimizing the need to increase the size of our electrical supply. The recommended electrical heating equipment in this um, project are following these key opportunities for the immediate future. We're looking at unitary air conditioner replacement, gas furnace replacement, rooftop units or RTUs, and gas tank or tankless water heater replacement. So truly, again, we're looking at partial electrification at these key opportunities for the immediate case. We'll get into in just a little bit what's expected over time. Because we know this is a lot of information, let's take a look at this in the form of this chart here. This chart shows a phasing for the Energized Denver requirements for the partial electrification of space and water heat upon system replacement. In 2023, in March, the permit process changes to achieve parity between permitting gas systems and heat pump systems. Today, the like for like replacement of a gas system is much easier. This will be changing again to be more fair and equal to the requirements um, or to the processes for switching to a heat pump. In 2025, heat pumps would be required upon replacement of listed equipment when considered cost effective. In 2027, the code will be updated to require heat pumps for listed systems upon replacement when cost effective of a different round of heat pumps and pieces of equipment. Um, the term cost effective in this case is defined as near cost parity, which will be defined again as the cost of replacement of a natural gas space or water heating system to at minimum a partially electric heat pump system, including all incentives that is within five to 15% of a like for like natural gas space or water heater system replacement, including a social cost of carbon dioxide of the like for like gas system replacement over its lifetime. So in other words, quick summary, 
Um, the permit process changes 2023. We're looking at adding an electrification feasibility reporting and changing some of the permitting requirements to make like for like gas for gas to going gas to heat pump to be a very similar process. In 2025, the equipment that is currently being targeted at in permitting will be required upon replacement um, to be switched to the minimum partial electrification when cost effective and a new round of permitting processes will come into play. And this is where again, looking for parity and permitting be between a new round of pieces of equipment. So in 2025, we'll be looking closer at packaged terminal systems, boilers and central hot water systems and heat pumps. Finally, in 2027, that second round of equipment of those PTACs, boilers, central hot water systems um, will be required to be replaced um, at end of life when cost effective to at minimum a partial electrification um, new system. So again, typically a dual fuel at minimum all the way to a full cold climate heat pump strategy. So let's take a slightly deeper dive at what's happening now in 2023. So starting on March 1st, when replacing a unitary air conditioner or condensing unit, when upgrading or replacing a natural gas furnace or rooftop unit, or a natural gas water heater in any commercial or multifamily buildings, if it's being proposed to be done with another gas system or unitary AC, there are going to be some new requirements in the Denver Energy Code again, based off the Energized Denver Ordinance. What does that look like? Well, currently we can start by looking at quick permits. These are permits that can be issued without the need for a plan review. For the equipment I just mentioned, that quick permitting process will no longer be available. Quick permits will still be available for other systems, but for these systems, the goal again is to create greater parity so when switching from gas to gas or AC only to AC only, that that's on par with switching from gas to an electric heat pump. The affected equipment that we're mentioning here when replaced will now require a plan review to obtain a permit. We're gonna go through some other optional items as well. Now, one key point here, boilers are not affected by this permitting process change in 2023. Those changes will go into effect in 2025. There's a lot to learn, we appreciate that. You can learn a lot more by going to denvergov.org slash quick permits. Um, the link will be live here, which you can also click on, which will take you to the page you need. Again, very specifically, equipment um, no longer allowed for quick permits include unitary air conditioners and condensing units that serve a heated space, gas furnaces and rooftop units um, used as forced air heating systems, and gas water heaters. Again, not central boilers, but unitary gas water heaters. You can either visit the link, denvergov.org slash quick permits, or if you've got your smartphone with you or a tablet, you can um, put it in camera mode, take a look at this QR code, and it will automatically bring you to the site that you need. One other final note here, none of this applies to other types of refrigeration, um, such as refrigeration for walk-in coolers, et cetera. This is strictly addressing space conditioning and water conditioning for use in multifamily and commercial buildings. We're gonna begin to look at these pieces of equipment one at a time here. Just again, we really wanna make sure this makes sense. And again, you can always go to the links that we provide to learn more. So again, for permit process changes, starting March 1st of 2023, if we're talking about a unitary air conditioner or condensing unit serving a heated space, and it's being replaced with another unitary air conditioner or condensing unit, one of the following is required. You can either provide an electrification feasibility report, um, or you can perform right sizing of the equipment. Now, right sizing here is typically considered to be manual N for commercial buildings and manual J for multifamily buildings. Um, but these, you must do one of these two if you're not switching to a heat pump. When looking at a gas-fired storage water heater or instantaneous water heater, again, not a full boiler, we're talking about um, gas storage units, 
gas tankless units or electric tankless units. If this is being replaced with another gas-fired storage water heater or instantaneous water heater, one of the following will be required at time of permitting. Either an electrification feasibility report, or you can perform leak testing of all the gas pipes in the building. Now, historically, as a part of the Denver Code, it was required to do gas um, leakage testing for the line going to the piece of equipment that's being replaced only. The option now moving forward be, would be to perform leakage testing on all the gas pipes in the building. Now, let's take a quick note here. In 2023, heat pump water heaters and air source heat pumps for space heating, if you're making these decisions, they do not require an EFR or right sizing or gas pipe pressure testing. Why? Because we would love for you to be adopting heat pump technology. So that process will be made as simple as possible. It's when you're sticking with like for like that you'll need to do one of these. Now, there are some exceptions here. Um, if there is an emergency replacement, equipment replacement scenario, which we'll get into in just a minute, um, that is considered an exception and these permit process changes will not need to be followed. And this does not currently um, apply to packaged terminal air conditioners and heat pumps, vertical um, terminal air conditioners and heat pumps, and gas-fired boilers. Um, used for space and water heat. That will happen in 2025. Sticking with reviewing these permit processes, now let's look at what happens it, when a gas-fired warm air furnace or rooftop unit is replaced with another gas-fired warm air furnace or rooftop unit. In this scenario, two of the following are required. An electrification feasibility report, right sizing of that equipment, and performing a leakage test on all the gas pipes, as I just described. In addition to picking at least two of those for part of the permitting process, the new fossil fuel furnace or rooftop unit needs to meet one of these two following. It must be shown to have low nitrogen dioxide emissions that not exceed 14 nanograms of nitrogen dioxide per joule of useful heat delivered to the heated space or have an annual fuel utilization efficiency, or AFUE, of 90% or greater. Again, exceptions, this does not apply for emergency replacement equipment, and this does not apply yet to the replacement of gas-fired boilers. We'll talk about that in 2025. Another exception, indoor gas-fired makeup air units are not required to comply with this section. So this is truly about gas-fired furnaces, and gas-fired rooftop units. When this discussion happens and we mention emergency replacement equipment, um, it is often asked, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, this is pulled directly from our city and county of Denver code. Um, emergency equipment replacement will be defined as where only one piece of heating equipment cooling equipment, ventilation system, or service water heating equipment is failing and is replaced by another having the same heating or cooling capacity and no other alterations are made to the central system or the water heating system. In that scenario, that is considered an emergency replacement and that will not need to follow all these process changes. Um, again, those emergency replacements can still qualify for the quick permit process. You can continue to follow the links that we've shown, or again, scan this QR code with your tablet or smartphone, and it will take you to the language specifically covering emergency replacements. Again, we recognize this is a lot of information, so we're gonna review some of what we've just said again, but in a slightly different format, so that hopefully this is all resonating with you. Again, we're looking at permit process and equipment replacement um, regulation, and here's our summary. March 2023, changes to near parity and permitting between, again, unitary AC or condensing units serving a heated space, gas furnaces and rooftop units, and gas water heaters. Um, in this scenario, the permit process changes apply to anything being changed there. How about 2025? Well, this will start in January of 2025. And those same pieces of equipment being going through the permit process changes now 
will have equipment replacement requirements in January of 2025. So heat pumps will be required upon replacement of these unitary ACs or condensing units serving a heated space, gas furnaces and rooftop units, and gas water heaters when considered cost effective. Now, how do we know if it's cost effective? This is the electrification feasibility report will help us determine. In 2025, a new round of permit process changes kick in. And this is, again, changes to near parity in permitting when we look at packaged terminal heat pumps and air conditioners, boilers, and central water heating systems. In 2027, equipment replacement um, based off of those permit changes in 2025 will go into effect. So heat pumps, at the very minimum, a dual fuel or hybrid um, system will be required upon replacement of packaged terminal air conditioners, central boilers, central water heating systems, again, when deemed to be cost effective. And again, in this case, cost effectiveness will be determined by the electrification feasibility report. We're reaching the end of this module and we wanna make sure that you've got access to all the tools you need. So for more information on code and permit changes, we recommend visiting the websites identified previously or you can reach out directly to the Community Planning and Development Group at the City and County of Denver. On the left-hand side of your screen, that link um, in, a PD, in the PDF version of this that will be sent out is available. Or you can, again, use your smartphone or tablet and scan that QR code. You can also call 720-865-2720 or email planreview at denvergov.org to learn more.